How are we doing guys? Myself, Chris Pretty OB E here and give a quick one. Vroom Talk True Season. First and foremost, guys, before I even play the video, this is about child abuse. So if you've been abused, if you feel like you know a family member that might have been abused, this might be a little bit triggering to you. But I feel like we all need to share this message because nine times out of ten, when we talk about abuse, when we talk about rape, when we talk about any of these cases, nine times out of ten, we always think of perpetrators. We always think of walking around on the street and waiting to see some shady little guy or waiting to see some sort of little pedo and all the rest of it sometimes it's a lot more closer than home sometimes it's the dad sometimes it's your brother sometimes it's your sister sometimes it's a close friend sometimes it's more closer than we actually think so i want you mothers i want you fathers sisters brothers to be much more of aware of the people that you have around your children it's very very important i know we always sit there and feel like you know i've got to go to work chris i've got to have a child minder and i've got to make sure that i'm putting food on the table but at the same time, your children's safety and your children's well-being is the most protocol. And this is a really, really sad case scenario. A sad story where a young girl was abused by a family friend. And also, there was also a mother that their father abused their kids for six years. And these are the cases where, how would you ever know? And these are the kind of times as any kids or any young people out there that are sitting there feeling like maybe something might be going wrong at home. Maybe someone might be doing something to me that they shouldn't be doing. Maybe someone's touching me. Maybe someone's coming into my bedroom please speak out please go to your mother your father please reach out to many of the organizations there's child abuse organizations there's child line that they can actually call up and get that support within this video they're going to be telling you a little bit more on how you can actually deal with it what support is there and there is going to be more extended support to the families that have suffered with child abuse i feel we like we need to look at this one very very much more deeper than we actually do we always say to our kids be safe when they're out make sure that you know you're walking and make sure you're in lit areas and make sure that you know you don't have your phone out and all the kind of rest of it or if you do have your phone out make sure you're talking to someone but we never talk to them about what about daddy what about mummy what about brothers what about sisters we need to be teaching our kids that no one's meant to be touching your mini we need to be teaching our boys no one's meant to be touching your do you understand what i'm trying to say and these are the kind of things when if we're not teaching them about our own family members we're only teaching them about the outsiders sometimes the inside can really really affect them the most because they don't actually know that damage is actually being done please guys share this message most importantly keep your kids kids safe make sure that your children's well-being is at the protocol but what's you guys thoughts comment below a life's work for a parent or carer but how do you make things better when the very worst hurt has been inflicted on your child sexual abuse throws a grenade into families lives but what help is on offer for the carers left to pick up the pieces. Sarah was a feisty, independent, incredibly intelligent child. We grew up in a village environment where there were about 10 or 11 children um, who all played together, which can be absolutely idyllic in most situations. It wasn't in ours. I was sexually abused. My memory's still foggy on when it started and when it ended. It was a family friend. How old were you, roughly? Um, eight, nine, because when I was going through pictures from when I was younger, I found an outfit that I remember from an assault. Kath Pickles and her daughter Sarah have waived their anonymity to tell their story. Kath didn't find out her daughter had been abused until she was in her teens. Sarah became the priority, literally trying to keep her alive. But Kath says she and the rest of the family felt like they were drowning. Endless overdoses, endless self-harm. 34 overdoses. Yeah. A, a revolving door throughout A&E. A, &A. a deeply, deeply unhappy child. The services rallied round Sarah, quite rightly, says Kath. But she says there was no handbook for what the rest of them should do. There wasn't any kind of guidance or advice for parents at all. Um, once people had jobs to do and they came into our house, the police came into our house, the social worker came in, and then they just tell you to, um, they kind of back out and it's like, oh, you can rebuild your lives now. And you just think, what, what planet are they on? Determined to pass on lessons learnt through almost a decade of bitter experience, Cass set up her own charity to help those helping survivors. 
It offers practical and emotional support from people who've been through it themselves. And it's just received £300,000 funding from the Home Office to see if it can be replicated elsewhere. We built a service that we wish we'd received and it seems that a lot of people agree with us. It's estimated around 1 in 20 children in the UK have been sexually abused, according to the NSPCC. And while care and support for those children is sometimes far from perfect, for the parents and carers looking after them, it's often non-existent. They say too often they're left isolated and completely adrift, simply hoping and praying they're doing the right thing for a child who's already been so damaged. The first I knew about it was um, when the police knocked on my door and they started saying that they needed to take all the electronics and cameras and things like that um, because there was um, evidence that maybe there was some photos um, of children. Rosie's life imploded as she was getting her children ready to go back to school after the Christmas holidays. Police arrested her husband and even worse was to come. A few months later, the police came back in the April and said, actually, they had found evidence that my children hadn't been safe. And particularly the older child, um, the abuse had been going on for about six years. And then when they got to leave, they said, I'm really sorry. There's nowhere we can signpost you. We wish, you know, we could give you some help, but there's there's nothing we can do. You know, there's no there's nowhere to signpost you. Um, the Samaritans, they didn't know anywhere, went to the GP. The GP didn't have anywhere they could sign post. She basically said um, uh, there's nothing she could do to help um, and said that I must have known about it and sort of sent me on my way <laughs> and that was it. Rosie, we're not using her real name, says of course the children were the focus, but trying to look after them while living with the realisation they had been abused by their own father, her husband, had left her devastated, almost broken by guilt. It was like he had died. It was like the whole of our history together, the whole of the children's um, uh, growing up, all of their, all the camping trips, all of the, the days out, all of the family events, they, they felt like lies. Everything was a lie. And then there's more guilt because you think, actually, we went camping, we had a lovely time, I really enjoyed myself, you know, but actually at the same time, my child was going through this horrendous thing. She ended up being referred to Cath's charity. The practical help invaluable, she says. The shared understanding, life-saving. So it didn't matter what her story was, what anybody else's story was. I knew how they felt and they knew how I felt. And that, that was enough. That was just enough. This morning, Kath went to meet MPs in Parliament to ask for more targeted support. Parliament Square. She expected to help a handful of families, but has worked with 250 over the past three years and has a growing waiting list. Things are so much better for Kath and her daughter now. But Kath believes things could have improved so much quicker if she'd known then what she has learnt the very hardest of ways. It is my greatest regret, knowing what I do now, knowing what I learn, looking back and thinking of the, thing, the mistakes that I made with the best intentions. There's nothing I can do about it. It happened. So I'm really proud of you for taking something awful and turning it into something good. Pickles and her daughter Sarah there. Well, in response to our report, the Home Office told Channel 4 News that it had recently granted four and a half million pounds to charities that provide vital support to victims and survivors of child sexual, sexual abuse. And this is said to include funding for the parents and carers of victims. Alison Lowe is the Deputy Mayor for Policing and Crime in West Yorkshire. Thanks very much for coming in. You watched that film. What do you make of it? Well, it, it's heartbreaking, um, very moving, and actually factually correct. There are very few, if any, services for the wider family who are affected by childhood sexual abuse. Um, and I think that uh, the mum, both the mums in that uh, piece make a really good point that uh, we all need to be stepping up and understand that uh, the traumatic impact on the whole family. Because exactly that, isn't it? I mean, you have, are a survivor of I child am. sexual abuse, but the ripples go 
beyond the victim themselves. Yeah, ab absolutely. And I think that um, as a parent now, as a mum, you know, if that happened to my child, I think the guilt would be so uh, terrible that I wouldn't be able to forgive myself, I wouldn't be able to function as a parent. And yet you've got to uh, look after yourself in those circumstances, look after uh, your child and other children, still work, still keep everything together. So it's a very, very big ask. And there's lots of support in the beginning, right up to the court case, if there is a court case, and then everything disappears uh, once uh, that process is finished. I mean, the Home Office point to the £4.5 million for charities that they've given. They say many of these will have an element of funding yeah. for families and carers. What do you say to that? Well, I think that that's a, a bit weak um, because most charities are massively underfunded, so they're going to spend the majority of their funding on uh, uh, the victims. Uh, so here in West Yorkshire, uh, we're spending £14 million a year, uh, and the vast majority of that is going directly on victim support, victim services, all victims. Uh, uh, we do fund a tiny charity called PACE, Parents Against Child Exploitation, uh, an amazing charity. It's a national charity, yeah. but it's only operating in about five areas of the country. So um, not much money goes to the wider family. I mean, the Home Office say it's, it's, it's up to you as police and crime commissioners, as local commissioners, to commission the services you see fit to, to commission? Uh, absolutely, but there isn't enough money for all the victims. So uh, our victim support service alone received 90,000 referrals last year. 90,000 referrals. Uh, so um, we have to focus our uh, very small amounts of money on victims first. Uh, we're told that we need to be victim focused. We've got the victims charter, which uh, we're hoping for the victims law to come. Um, and until the government uh, mandates us to fund um, uh, services for the whole family, most of us will choose to prioritise And that is the key, isn't it? Yeah. It is mandating yeah. a wider, more focused service. It's what Kath Pickles yeah. in the film wants. That, it, that is absolutely directed at those trying to support the victim because it's a very different issue that they're facing. Uh, absolutely. And their success or failure really will uh, determine whether that child thrives. So it's really essential because uh, the care that you receive from uh, your parents in that circumstance will help you to move forward or not. And so we do need to prioritise the wider family. I mean, how do you make that case? in a moment that you'll know from your own budget as a, as, as a commissioner, as the deputy mayor, how do you make that case for more funding at a time of austerity, essentially? Well, yeah. <laughs>